Welcome. In this video, we're going to review how to integrate a system of ordinary differential equations using MATLAB. So here we are in our um, GNU Octave environment, uh, which is functionally, again, very similar to our MATLAB environment. The example system we're going to use is the lotka volterra equations, which, let me just switch desktop, so here you know it better probably as the predator, as the predator prey equations. So in this differential system of equations, uh, x is the number of preys, and so dx dt is the rate of change of preys, and y is the number of predators, so dy dt is the rate of change of the number of predators. So uh, there are four parameters in this equation. They're labeled here alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. And if we look at the first equation here for the preys, so for example rabbits, we see that uh, rabbits tend to reproduce no matter what. And so if alpha is positive, uh, then if there are any rabbits around, then more rabbits are going to be made. And if there are any wolves around, then, or, or predators, uh, the more predators we have, the faster the rabbits tend to disappear. And if there are many, many rabbits around, the wolves have a very, hard, uh, very easy time at finding preys. And so uh, if we have a lot of rabbits, a lot of wolves, we tend to lose a lot of rabbits at the same time. Uh, when we look at the prey or the predator equation, dy dt, we see that the wolves are a little bit more intelligent. So there's more predators being born if the food supply is abundant. So if x is large, then this whole term here, which is the an increase in the number of predators, goes up faster. And if there's, regardless of the food supply, since nothing is eating the wolves, they sort of just die off of old age. So the rate at which wolves die is directly proportional to the number of wolves around. Okay, so that is our system of equation. To have a, uh, to have a complete system that we can solve, we need to specify the four values, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. We also need to specify initial conditions, one for x and one for y. And this is it. So with that information, then we can integrate this initial condition problem that consists of a system of two ordinary differential equations. So we're going to do this uh, with MATLAB. We're going to integrate the system numerically. Uh, so here, I'm going to start a script. So let's see. So what's this script? So first, I'm going to need to define my constants for sure. Uh, here, I'm going to use some weird numbers. So A is, B is equal to 2 thirds. B, I'm going to set to 4 thirds. Uh, and then delta, I'm going to call it D, is going to be 1 and gamma I'm going to set equal to 1 as well. So these are maybe some bizarre choices of values, but historically we know, and I've tried this before, that these, uh, this combination will give us a nice solution to look at. So this is my parameter alpha. And let me, to, let me put some comments so that when I read the code later on, so this is beta, this is the parameter delta, and this is my parameter gamma. Uh, I call it maybe DG since I don't have Greek letters in my uh, set of characters. Okay. Um, actually, let me take off the semicolons there so that when we run when we run the uh, the script, we're going to see those values displayed on the screen. Then I want to decide. So I need the initial conditions. So here I'm going to make a vector. I'm going to call it IC for the initial condition. And this is going to be the initial value of uh, x. I'll just pick 1 for both, actually. I'm going to make them. This doesn't really matter all that much. I'm going to pick 1 and 1 for the initial conditions of x and y. And then I need a span. So here I'm going to put a t span is equal to, and I'm going to start at t equals 0. And I'm going to go forward until 50 time units, like so. Actually, again, let me take out the semicolons. Okay. So now, how do we integrate? Oh, I press Control S, so let me just save my script. I'm going to call this Lotka Volterra dot M. There we go. Okay. So how we're going to solve this numerically, you may, you may remember from your numerical um, or your uh, numerical uh, methods course in your undergraduate degree. Uh, for initial condition differential equations, you saw methods such as, for example, the Euler integration. Uh, you saw something called modified Euler. You also saw methods called Runge-Kutta. 
and very specifically you may have derived a number of different rugged cutter methods and there's one which uh, people usually call the classical fourth order rugged cutter which is often called which is often shortened to rk4 so this is the rk4 is a very very classic methods of integrating uh, ordinary differential equations matlab actually provides us with a function called ODE45, which we're going to use in this case. Um, you may remember, so we've, um, in numerical methods, uh, usually we talk about, we don't spend uh, much time on it, or we, not many people spend that much time on it, but you can estimate the amount of error that, uh, that, is, uh, that is generated by a numerical method by using two different schemes of different orders. So there is such a family of schemes that are the fifth order Runge kata, which is often shortened as RK5. So ODE45 uh, integrates your system using RK4, and it estimates the amount of error using RK5. And then it adapts, it actually adapts the time step um, using the estimate, the error estimation made by RK5 in order to control the amount of error that the method is making. So you can see if you shorten this, this RK4 plus RK5 method, I could shorten it to RK45, which then becomes, uh, if I want to say explicitly what the method does, it integrates, it integrates ordinary differential equations. So the method becomes ODE45. Okay, so let me just erase these notes. And let's start trying to use this. So you can find the basics of the method. Here I'm going to go up to the browser. You can find the basics of this method. Here I have highlighted so you can see it here. This is actually a MathWorks documentation page for the function ODE45 specifically. Um, there is a more general page about integrating ordinary differential equations, which we'll talk about, uh, which will link to a number of different solvers, with E45 is generally called a solver, and numerical integration, actually I'm going to stop here, okay. So let me go back to my with Cavaltera. Okay, so how do we use this? The method with the function with E45 will return at least two uh, variables, which are often called T and Y, and here I'm going to call it Y solution so I don't get confused into what is called y and not. Um, so in here, we're going to have a vector of all the time values at which the solution was computed, and y sol is going to be a matrix that has all of the x and all the y values at all of the times that it was computed, that they were computed at. Then we have to pass to OD45 a number of things. We have to give it the span, so I have to say when I start the integration and when I stop it, in this case, it's from uh, a time of zero and for 50 time units. And then I have to pass it initial conditions in the form of a vector where I have the initial value of uh, each variable in the system. And then actually the first element has to be a function. And we do this by passing, we use the at sign uh, to pass a handle to a function. And then I'm going to specify a function which actually computes this system here dx dt and dy dt. This function doesn't exist by default in MATLAB. So this is what represents the physics of the problem. And so we're going to have to write an equation. So I'm going to call it Lotka Volterra system example. So this is going to be the name of my function. And OK, so now if I try to run this, it's going to give me an error. So here, if we just run Lutka Volterra, uh, oh, hold on. My apologies, I'm back. So I just had a. Uh, Minor problem, I had just a, a, a typo here. I inverted the K and the T. So if I call Lotka Volterra, there we go. 
So now my function works. It prints out the four values of the four different parameters, uh, the initial conditions, one and one, the span, and then I get an error that says, oh, this function, uh, no function and no method found. Okay, so that's because I have to actually provide this function to MATLAB. So let us create this now. So control N. So we're going to create, we're going to create a new function. It has a single output out equals to uh, the name of the function. This will be Lotka Volterra system example. And it's going to have two inputs, T and Y. I'm going to call this Y vector. Oh, and now we're going to save our file. Okay, so what does this file do? Here, let me just take out this so we can form the MATLAB uh, function or the MATLAB, um, uh, MATLAB syntax. So what does this function do? It takes two inputs. One of them is T, is my dependent variable, which in the case of the uh, Lotka Volterra system has the meaning of time. And then it, re it contains or it receives also a vector. In this case, I called it Y vector. And this vector has the same size as my system so this is going to be a size 2 vector and the first uh, the first variable in that vector is I'm going to assign it to x the second variable I'm going to assign it to y uh, this is not uh, necessary I just like to do this so I can have nice readable equations afterwards in the function and what decides whether x is in the first place oops, or in the second place, uh, nothing does. I do. So I have just, by writing this line, I've just assigned meaning to this uh, vector uh, variable. And then we want to calculate the derivatives. So I'm going to calculate dx dt. I'll write it out in full. Is equal to, let me just go back to my system. It's equal to ax minus bxy. Be a times x minus b times x times y. And now I'll put the semicolons everywhere because this function will be called many, many times by ODE45. And I don't want to get the output at every step. And then dy dt I'm going to compute. This is delta xy minus gamma y. So this will be d times x times y minus gamma times y. Let me just line up the minus signs. There we go. I think this is a little nicer. And then my variable out has to be a vector of the same length. So my variable out is going to be a vector of the same length as the vector coming in, uh, y vec here. And it contains the derivatives of the different variables. So in the first position, I'll have the numerical value of the derivative of the variable, of the derivative of the variable that is in the first position. In the second position, I will have the numerical value of the derivative of the variable that's in the second position. I don't know when this function is called. I don't know what the value of time is. I don't know what the value of x or what the value of y is, but those values are passed through this variable. ODE45 will ask for the computation of the derivative at different specific values of t, x, and y. There is one more thing I need to do because here there's a, B, D, and G, the functions. So here, let me just define them in here. Actually, I'm just going to go and pick them up uh, from here, like so. I'm just going to copy them and re-indent. So now inside my function, I have the values of the parameters. And I believe this is it. So let's just try, let me just clear the, the desktop. And then here, let Cavaltera, let's just run, and we get answers. So let's just see what do we get. Oh, actually, there's a lot of output here. Let me go and fix this. In my system example, I'm just going to put um, semicolons. Otherwise, every time this function is called, it will print four numbers. And then at the end, there we go. This value of t here, this is the output from, in my script, from this line over there. And it's also going to output y sol, oops, y solution over here. So the vector, the column vector t, is the value at time, is, the, is each of the value of time at which the solution was computed. 
the vector or the matrix Y solve has two columns, one for each variable in the system. In the first column, I have the value of the first variable, which I decided was X. So this is the value of X, the praise at every time value that it's at the system uh, or that OD45 returns a solution for. And on the second column, I have the value of Y, the number of predators for each time value that's considered. And now if I want to plot my solution, I can plot, for example, time, and I'm going to plot the second, or the first, let me plot the number of preys. So I'll take every row of the first column, that is every row of the X column, and I'm going to plot this in a blue line. Oops. My vector, or my, uh, my variable is actually called Y sol. Enter. There we go. And now we see that the uh, number of preys actually oscillates. So it initially decreases and then it bounces back and comes to a high value and then goes around and around. The solution's a little choppy, but it's, uh, it's okay. We'll see how to fix that uh, very soon. If we wanted to plot both the preys and the predators, then we'll plot T and then Y sol, and then I'll plot every row of the second column. And I'm going to plot those in red, because red, at least in Canada, in North America, is thought to be a very aggressive color, just like wolves. And now we see that initially both the number of preys and predators uh, decreases, but then as the number of predators decreases sharply, the number of preys actually bounces back. And as the food supply is higher, the wolves, actually the wolf population thrives, but then there's uh, too many wolves it actually has decreased the number of preys, and then we get this cyclical oscillations where the number of predators and the number of preys are out of phase. Now there are two main characteristics about my code. Actually, this is it. We should point out that we have integrated our system of differential equations. Here, let me put in my plot command, T, Y, Sol. This is the number of preys. I'll plot in blue and then the number of predators I will plot in red so that I get the plots automatically. Now we are done except there's two uh, there's two problems. So one thing that annoys me is that if I want to change the value of one of these parameters a, b, d, or g, I don't change them here. I have to go into my function and change them over here. And so good practice would be to do the following is I want to pass a, B, D, and G as inputs to my function. So then I'm going to comment out these lines. Actually, I'll do two things. First, I'll comment them out. And then I'm going to just write definitions. And I'm going to take out the specific values. Like this. These are my parameters. And then let me just label as well x is the number of preys. Here I'll actually point out that it's equal to y vec 1. And I'll take out just to here. This is just uh, this is now formatting. And then I'll write that y is equal to the second variable, this is the number of predators. Like so. Okay, so now my system is, I also have, um, I also have uh, comments that identify the system, and here I'll write at the top, this is the Lotka Volterra differential, uh, differential equation system, even though the name of the function is actually quite uh, self-explanatory. Okay, so now if I want to run my script again, here let me just clear the workspace. So I'm going to call my function and I get an error. A is undefined near line 15, column 10, yes, in my system example. And that's because, so in this function here, A is undefined, and that's because ODE45 by default expects a function that has only two inputs. So by default, the first input would be uh, the independent variable, and the second input would be the vector of dependent variables. 
So now that my function has more inputs, it ODE 45 doesn't know where to pass the values for t and y. So we have to tell it how to do this. So in my uh, specification of the function handle, I would tell it you're going to use the two variables called t and y, and when you call the function, you use t, y, and then a, b, d, and g. So t and y, OD45 knows that these are the dummy variables that it needs to use, where it can pack the variables at the values that it wants. And a, b, d, and g, it's just going to keep passing these values here that are already defined. So this is how I pass parameters from outside of OD45 through OD45 into the function that I want to compute. Okay, so now if we run our equation system, oh, here, let me clear the workspace again. So let me run my script, let Cavaltera, and we get, there we go. So we have the, we have the same t vector that comes out, and this is every time value at which the solution was computed, and y solve. This is the value of uh, the value of every variable, so the first x variable and then the y variable at every time value at which the answer is returned. And then I'd included the plot uh, function, so I get actually a, a plot that outputs nicely. Um, now, as I mentioned, this is the second character characteristic that I, uh, annoys me, is that the solution is very choppy. And I get a point here, one point there, one here, one there. So I'm, this is it, especially on, on a function that Cycles like this, I really have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points per oscillation, which is really not all that much. And so I'd want to make sure that I'm not making too much error. So one way to do this, I'm going to go up to my, um, I'm going to go up to my browser. You have already opened a, a, another MathWorks documentation page which is called summary of ODE options. So what we've passed so far, we're going to come down, is a function that defines the system, the span, and the initial conditions. Those are the absolute minimum that define the differential equation system I'm going to solve. I can pass other options to the differential equation integrator, and we're going to use two of the ones that one is very, very likely to pass, are the absolute and relative tolerance. So I'm going to come here, and the way I define these, here I've just pasted from, um, from my example, so I create a variable using this function ODE set, and then I give it an argument, so in this case RELTOL stands for relative tolerance, ABSTOL stands for absolute tolerance, so for every variable, for all variables, x and y, I want the absolute, uh, very, uh, the absolute error to be less than 10 to the minus 5. That seems reasonable. Let's just see. Um, we'll just do, oh, I've killed the, the window again, but we'll keep 10 to the minus 5. And then I want the relative tolerance, 10 to the minus 2, that is very high. Or I'm going to set 10 to the minus 8. And then we'll see, let's just take note. Um, OD45 computed, you can see here, if you see the mouse, in the workspace, the variable YSOL has 49 rows. Same thing for the variable T. So that means that OD45 judged that to keep the, uh, to keep the amount, the error under control, at least for the default values it had in Octave, it used 49 integration steps from 0 to 50. Uh, which is actually pretty big. Basically, went from it calculated at zero, at one, at two, at three, and then so on. Okay, so now I've turned down. I want the relative tolerance. That is the the you can think of it as the percent error between two um, subsequent uh, between two subsequent uh, computation points as ten to the minus eight. So let me save my script. I'm gonna come here. I will clear my workspace make some room in the window, and then we're going to call let Cavaltura, we're going to run our scripts again. Oh, we forgot one thing. So we created this options, now I have to pass the options. I'm going to come to the end here, OPTS. So I'm going to pass the options to the ODE45 function. 
And this is how I modify the precision. So now we're ready to run our script. Enter. Oh. And here we'll take uh, just a small moment to go and see. We have an error in it. Must be a numeric vector. Let's just see where we made a mistake. So we should pass T span, Y0, and options. Ah, this is uh, here. We've actually. Uh, I made just a manipulation mistake. I must have uh, mistakenly erased initial condition. So here we're passing the function, T span, initial condition, options. Let's go back. Here, let me just clear the window. So now let's run our script. There we go. So now our function is much smoother and you'll see now we've computed 106 time or er, step size or number of steps of time steps. Uh, 106 previously we had 49. So this is more than twice the number of time steps. And now I know that the absolute tolerance. So each one of these data points, the error is less than 10 to the minus 5. And the relative tolerance is less than 10 to the minus, uh, I believe, 6 is what we put. Let me just go and check. 10 to the minus 8, actually. So here, let me just bring back our plot. And this is really it. Now we have integrated a numerical, we have in numerically integrated a system of differential equations. And it, not only that, but we've also modified the precision or the tolerance of the uh, integration. And we have integrated a system that requires us to pass parameters through the parameters a, b, d, and g through to our evaluation function for the derivatives. So if we come here, if I change one of these, if I make the, let us make the g, this is the rate at which preys or at which predators die. I'm going to augment this to five. And you'll notice here, I'm only changing it in the script and not in this function. This function here is true for any instance of the lut cavalter system. Let me just close. So we've already closed the window. We're going to, the figure window, I'm going to clear my workspace. And let's call the script again. There, wow, a much, much different picture. Actually here, the predators go down to almost zero and then spike through. It could almost seem like I would have a, a mass extension of walls, and I could be uh, I could be um, fooled into thinking that there are no walls left in my system, and then all of a sudden they reappear.